Every American state is packed with an abundance of bars, but within each of their borders is a bar above the rest. We've selected the best watering holes in each state, and we can say with absolute certainty that you won't see a bad bar on this list. If it's a well-mixed and inventive craft cocktail you're after, the Collins Bar in the Loft District of downtown Birmingham is your answer. It has an impressive bourbon selection, as well as a vintage vibe. That's all thanks to the antiquarian typewriters and the wallpaper-looking periodic table behind the liquor section. The Salty Dog Saloon is a picture-perfect Alaskan bar. This historic bar is set in the Kachimak Bay city of Homer on the Kenai Peninsula. Some of the first cabins there were built in 1897, and one of them is the Salty Dog. The structure served as a grocery store, office, schoolhouse, post office, and was even moved after a 1964 earthquake. The now iconic lighthouse was added to cover a water storage tank, and it finally became a bar in 1957. The Bikini Lounge is a lovable dive in the Grand Avenue Arts District near downtown Phoenix. Though it's been open since 1947, Bikini Lounge was remodeled in the 1960s and is currently decked out in Tom Cooper murals, a bamboo-walled back patio, and even a tiki-themed bike rack. The cash-only haunt usually is known for dance parties, tiki drinks, cold beer, or plain stiff cocktails. Established in 1876 and restored in 2007, the Capitol Hotel in Little Rock has been, according to its own website, Little Rock's front porch for 140 years. The on-site Capitol Hotel Bar & Grill sports a, quote, glossy, dark-panelled bar upon which knowledgeable bartenders will slide down signature mules, house cocktails, draft beers and wine by the glass. The top spot for an amazing bar in California goes to Tiki Tea in Los Angeles. The classic tiki bar was opened in 1961 by Ray Buin, who bartended for the Don the Beachcomber. Now Buin's son, Mike Buin Sr., and his sons run the bar. It's a petite place, just 12 bar stools, but there are 94 drinks options. It goes without saying that if you want a tiki drink while in Los Angeles, you can't go wrong with this place's signature drinks, such as the Cactus Cooler, the Fog Cutter, and Ray's Mistake. The Centennial State is chock full of history, and My Brother's Bar delivers. The historic brick structure has offered a bar since the 1870s, and at this point happens to be the oldest saloon in Denver. It's also where icons of the Beat Generation, Neil Cassidy, Allen Ginsberg, and Jack Kerouac used to hang. What's more, burgers are served on wax paper till 1am. A New England bar must come with a good history, and the Griswold Inn in Essex has loads of it. Quite honestly, prohibition was a bigger challenge for us than the 1918 pandemic. The tap room space here first opened in 1776, but was originally built as a schoolhouse in 1735. But it's not just a historic site, it's also a great bar, even landing the number 92 spot on the Daily Meals list of 150 best bars in America. There's also a great drink menu, a year-round Christmas tree, and Catherine Hepburn has enjoyed a drink here. The most iconic bar in Delaware is Kelly's Logan House. It was built in 1864 and became a bar in 1889, making the Trolley Square Tavern the oldest Irish pub in the state. Listed in the National Register of Historic Places, the spot is a go-to for St. Patrick's Day, Guinness on Draft, and house cocktails. To this day, a member of the Kelly family oversees operations of the bar. While great Florida bars abound, the no-name pub in the Florida Keys is high on the Guardian's list of the top 10 bars in Florida and in our hearts. The Big Pine Key Beach Bar has one feature you'll notice right away. Tons of dollar bills on the walls, ceilings, and every other crevice. It's marked with a sign that says, no-name pub, you found it as it has for much of the time since the building's construction in 1931. By the 1950s, the place became an out-of-the-way bar, as it remains today. Savannah, Georgia has the best bar in the state, the original Pinky Masters. This bar can be spotted on Drayton Street by the hanging Pabst Blue Ribbon sign. The gin joint was opened by Luis Christopher Mastopoulos, aka Pinky, in the 1950s. Though it continues to be an assuming dive, the neighborhood haunt has a political past. This was a regular stop of Jimmy Carter's, both as senator and president. We've even had uh, Jimmy Carter stop in and declare his pre uh, presidency here uh, at Pinky Masters. 
Duke's Waikiki Barefoot Bar is on every list of Hawaii's best bars, including this one. A beach bar named for surfer Duke Kahanamoku, Duke's in Waikiki is about as Hawaiian as it gets. The Barefoot Bar menu lists Hawaiian beers and wines, as well as signature cocktails. Those include Duke's Mai Tai, Guava Jams, and of course, the Endless Summer, a blend of mango and citrus vodka with guava, coconut, and passion fruit juice. The Old Boise Historic District is home to the best bar in the Gem State, Pengili Saloon. The tavern is known for its more than 100 years old Brunswick bar, as well as plush booths, well-worn wooden tables, and Old West decor. Despite Pengili's being a major bar hopping stop in downtown Boise, it definitely offers a small town vibe. The Billy Goat Tavern on Michigan Avenue is an essential bar experience. The legendary watering hole was opened in 1934 by William Billy Goat Cianis, and 10 years later was known for posting the words No Republicans Allowed in the window during the 1944 Republican Convention. It was also made famous in the late 70s when satirized by the beloved cheeseburger sketch on Saturday Night Live. Too early for a cheeseburger. Too early for a cheeseburger? Look! Cheeseburger, 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 cheeseburger. While the place is known for burgers and Pepsi, there is a full bar and cold beer. If you're attracted to bars with buzzing neon signs, look into Red Key Tavern. Inside, you'll find 1950s-style decor, even though the Red Key was opened in 1933. This is a well-established, cash-only Midwestern bar, complete with generations of regulars, daily drink specials, and a simple menu of cheeseburgers, chili, and potato salad. The mirrored walls, soft twinkle lights, small tables, and loads of wall decor and framed awards make the place always feel cozy. Kelly's Little Nipper is a magical dive bar in Des Moines, with roots going back to 1940. This bar is housed in a standalone structure that was built in 1908, but the bar has been Kelly's Little Nipper since 1981, when Ernie Nipper took the reins as owner. House cocktails include Kelly's Screwdriver, which pairs well with the fried appetizers and sandwiches. Mort's Martini and Cigar Bar was established in 1996 in historic Old Town in Wichita, and it's been something of a favorite hang ever since. You could come in for a quick mixed drink, but you'd be missing the point of this martini and cigar bar. Mort's offers more than 160 martinis on its drink menu, as well as an impressive array of cigars for sale. This brick house bar also features live music on a nightly basis, a heat and cool patio, craft beer selections, and a quick menu of bar food. There are many taverns called Magnolia Bar in this country, but a great one is in Kentucky. Mag Bar, as it's locally dubbed, was founded in 1962 in what is now the largest residential Victorian preservation district in the nation, aka historic Old Louisville. The punk-packed jukebox is famous citywide, the bands and DJs are loud, and the bar is cluttered with decor. Magbar is beloved for their cheap drinks and eclectic event hosting. This isn't the type of place with $13 signature cocktails. Though many fantastic bars and breweries dot the historic districts of Louisiana, it's New Orleans that happens to be home to the best bar in the state. The Sazerac Bar at the Roosevelt Hotel on the edge of the French Quarter is moody with its African walnut wood, leather seating, and mid-century murals. Here, the menu lists beer, wine, and modern cocktails like the Port of New Orleans. But at a historic joint like this, opt for a classic cocktail with, what else, a Sazerac. Founded in 2013 by husband and wife team Joanna and Steve Corman, Vina's Fizz House is also a retail shop, complete with cocktail kits, vintage barware, and locally made bitters for sale. One of their kits, the main margarita, is a blend of tequila, blueberry, pine, lime, dry curacao, and Vina's Bitter Tyrone, and it's incredible. This downtown Portland cocktail bar serves it along with other Pine Tree State spins like the Rocky Coast Bloody Mary and the Lumber Sexual. Venus also offers an impressive mocktail menu. If a sign reading Welcome to the Land of Beer doesn't coax you through the entryway it sits atop, we don't know how to help you. Max's Tap House in the Fells Point area of Baltimore offers more than 100 rotating beers on tap and more than 1,000 bottles too, making it home to Maryland's largest beer selection. Max's also offers daily drink specials and themed happy hours, a tight menu of bar food, and a scenic outdoor patio. 
Boston being a major metropolitan area, it's packed with high-end cocktail lounges and modern breweries, but Wally's Cafe is a simple Cheers-style bar. This best bar in Massachusetts is a jazz club and drinking den with inexpensive beer, straightforward cocktails, and a promise of a lively musical atmosphere. It dates back to the 1940s, though its current location has been in place since 1979. Marked by its Star Paper Co. sign painted on the front facade, Old Dog Tavern is as cool-looking as it is quick on drinks. Opened in 2010 by Amy and Sean Smith, the bar and grill has become a go-to in Kalamazoo, which has even led MLive to declare it Michigan's best neighborhood bar. Signature cocktails include the Tommy Pickles Margarita and a Build Your Own Bloody Mary, and there's some incredible mac and cheese. In addition to the historic digs, Old Dog also has one of the best beer gardens in Michigan. Psycho Susie's Waterfront Lounge has been around since 2003, though it feels like the little tiki hut and pizza bar has been there since the dark days of the mid-century. Psycho Susie's is set right on the Mississippi River in northeast Minneapolis and has done some interesting stuff, like open bar reservations during the COVID-19 pandemic. But overall, Psycho Susie's is just a weird retro bar heavy on the animal print with signature tropical drinks in custom tiki mugs. It's also big on holidays with over-the-top Halloween and Christmas parties. The upstairs bar at the City Grocery in Oxford is a classic Mississippi haunt. It's the type of place that has welcomed Ole Miss professors and students, well-to-do Southerners, and well-worn travelers, as well as Anthony Bourdain. Pretty friggin' comfortable, and you don't care much about getting out. <laughs> right? Right? Am I right? Well, no one here seems too bitter about that. Classic cocktails include the Old Fashioned and Pimm's Cup, as well as local law in a glass like the Oxfordian. If you're extremely lucky, you may get a seat on the famous balcony. There's also wine, beer, and views of Oxford's town square from on high. For a truly KC night of drinking, you've got to go to the Green Lady Lounge. This is a two-story jazz club that perfectly blends music, barbecue, and baseball. There's no cover charge, no bright lights, and no chance of not having a good time. Step through the entryway beneath the red awning, order your favorite mixed drink, and get comfortable for a full night of live music. Charlie B's in Missoula is named for the owner, Charlie Baumgartner, who's been in charge since 1980. The place attracts college students, Montana locals, and travelers looking for an inexpensive drink as early as 8 a.m. It has a wall called the Wall of Regulars, which has framed portraits of the spot's usual suspects. Another amazing perk is the adjoining Dinosaur Cafe, which serves a tight menu of Cajun food. The Homey Inn is an iconic place in Omaha. In fact, the well-worn bar serves four varieties of champagne on tap, sweet, dry, strawberry, and peach. Homey was established in 1956 and has as storied a past as any neighborhood joint. Come here for the bubbly, but stay to admire the vintage baseball cards and befriend the regulars. The Silver State has a weird and wacky history, and part of that includes atomic testing in its desert landscape. Cue the 1952 established Atomic Liquors. As it still holds the title of the oldest freestanding bar in Las Vegas. The bar is pinned with a vintage Old Vegas style sign of lights reading liquor and cocktails. Inside, find cocktails like the Hunter S. Mash, rotating taps of craft beer, and a dinner menu of comfort food. What's more, this is where the Rat Pack, the Smothers Brothers, and Barbara Streisand used to drink. A good Irish pub is never hard to find, but a great Irish pub called The Peddler's Daughter is found in Nashua. Inside this cozy, heavily decorated bar, patrons are sipping a frothy pint of Guinness or Harp, finishing a plate of Irish nachos, enjoying live music, and hopefully slapping a few tables. The list of Irish whiskey available here is impressive, as is the number of patches stuck up around the wraparound wooden bar. Jersey Shore locals and visitors flock to the Wonder Bar in Asbury Park, and for good reason. This is a nightclub and day-drinking haven where big Jersey names like Bruce Springsteen and Bon Jovi have performed, even though the bar's only been open since 2002. The place features Tilly, the goofy drinking mascot on the mural outside of the bar. The menu at this dog-friendly shoreside tavern also offers wings, sandwiches, beer, wine and cocktails like the Rum Bucket. If you'd like a killer drinking experience in the land of enchantment, be sure to head downtown to the Matador in Santa Fe. This cash-only, 67-person capacity underground bar is where you'll find cheap mixed drinks and cold domestic beer, along with a small gaggle of regulars. The Matador feels like a college dive bar, but it's definitely an all-ages-above-21 neighborhood watering hole. Expect post-punk on the speakers, off-the-cuff films on the screens, and an espresso bar to boot. 
In a world of high-end cocktail bars and modern brew houses, Alibi is a proper neighborhood haunt. The bar is set in the Fort Greene neighborhood and it's a favorite among local and dive bar seekers. Bartenders here only take cash, but drinks are inexpensive, prompting one writer to refer to the Alibi as a legitimate drinker's paradise. The proof is right inside, where there are Christmas lights, wall graffiti and a row of regulars at the bar. You'll feel pretty thirsty once you get over the initial shock of pulling up to Thirsty Beaver Saloon in Charlotte's Plaza Midwood. The entryway to the standalone dive looks welcoming, while the towering apartment complex surrounding it? Not so much. Inside, you can drink cold, cheap beer by the light of the neon signs, which adorn the short walls along with bras and old country music memorabilia. You're also welcome to play darts and pump some coins into the jukebox. Empire Tavern in downtown Fargo has been around since it was established in 1936. When Prohibition ended, the Empire was one of the first bars open in town after years spent as Empire Cafe. Today, the bar is marked by the iconic neon sign above the brick facade. Inside, find drink specials, dark wooden booths, neon beer signs, and bush light on tap. There's a Wes Anderson-inspired basement bar in Columbus. The Light of Seven Matchsticks is a craft cocktail lounge established underneath Natalie's coal-fired pizza and live music. Signature cocktails are divided into categories like Profound Dream State and Meet the Mentor. Plus, there's no cell service and no kids allowed, if that helps. Many bars stand out with a gimmick, but many aren't as enticing as the lunchbox. This is the specialty drink at Edna's Club and Restaurant, a highly accessible neighborhood bar in Oklahoma City. The dive is complete with low ceilings, wallpapered in dollar bills, neon beer signs, pool tables, and a green light for smokers. An order of the OKC famous lunchbox is a big mug full of beer, amaretto, and a splash of orange juice. Since around 1980, Edna's also offers bar snacks and a well-loved jukebox. If you'd like to do a sip tour of Oregon beer without neglecting your drinking buddy's desire for a house cocktail, the Loyal Legion in Portland is your answer. The bar has 99 Oregon beers on tap, as well as a lengthy list of cocktails and wine. The Loyal Legion is also the longest bar in Portland, which adds to its classic look. The bar goes with a less is more look, meaning there are plush navy booths, pops of potted plants, and wood trims everywhere else in the old PPAA building. When it comes to taverns, Philadelphia takes the win, specifically Tattooed Mom. This tattoo parlor-themed neighborhood bar in Queen Village is colorfully and overly decorated. It offers cold beer and house cocktails like the Picoltini and Cosmo Cloud. There's also a menu of snacks, sandwiches, and vegan options, as well as friendly bartenders and some extraordinary lounge spots to enjoy your beverage. For a historic tavern experience in Rhode Island, there's no more historic place to get a drink than the bar at White Horse Tavern in Newport. The two-story structure in which White Horse is housed was built in 1652, and since it's been a bar since 1673, it's also the oldest operating tavern in the country. This place is first and foremost an upscale restaurant, but the bar area serves a tavern Mai Tai and offers some impressive pours of wine. Sure, signed dollar bills are a common gimmick of neighborhood bars, but when it's done well, it's a comforting scene. Cue the Griffin, found in Charleston, which is absolutely plastered with bills signed by drinkers from around the world, dating back to more than 20 years, though some of those bills recently came down to support employees during the pandemic. This is a neighborhood dive with cold beer and accessible bartenders and patrons. The bar offers an efficient menu of bar food, including some legendary wings. A truly monumental bar in South Dakota is the Ice House in the southeastern city of Yankton. Ice House has been around since 1928, Today, this brick standalone keeps up an old tradition. Drinkers are actually encouraged to smash their beer bottles under the deck after finishing a cold one. Lower Broadway in downtown Nashville is absolutely packed with tourist-trapping bars and eateries. But there are a couple of authentic Music City honky-tonks on this famous strip, and Robert's Western World is one of them. The bar and music venue is known for ice-cold beers, live country and western bands, and fried bologna sandwiches. And as for the name, the space was once a famous instrument shop but also Rhinestone Western Wear and Robert's Western Wear Bar and Nightclub before becoming the famous watering hole. You can still spot boots on display on the other side of the bar. It's hard to overlook the great watering holes in Austin, Houston and San Antonio, but Adair's Saloon is just that special. Adair's has been in deep Ellum for about 20 years, but the first run dates back to the 1960s when it was opened by SL and Anne Adair. Adair's has written mementos and stickers on the walls, cheap beer, and plenty of live country western acts. Patrons and performers here have included the Dixie Chicks to Elvis Presley. And this little Texas honky-tonk also offers a country-filled jukebox, juicy burgers, and shuffleboard. 
Shooting Star Saloon has been open since 1892, making it the longest running bar in Utah, according to Gastronomic. But according to the bar itself, it's been slinging cold ones since 1879, making it the oldest continuously operating saloon west of the Mississippi. The Huntsville Bar in northern Utah offers beer only, but not craft beer, just honky-tonk beer. No cocktails or wine, but there is coffee, malts and soda. There is also a menu of Huntsville famous burgers served with chips, no fries. Three Needs Taproom and Pizza Cube is a laid-back bar in Vermont that really welcomes all kinds. The bar offers multiple pool tables, pinball, and a big outdoor courtyard for the warmer months. The Three Needs offers a lengthy list of Vermont beers, bottles, cans, and draft, as well as creative cocktails like Glenn's Fruit Punch and the Spicy Margarita Jello Shot. Oh yes, and there are also pizzas. B-Side is a neighborhood bar and beacon to music and cocktail nerds alike. This Fairfax cocktail lounge in the Mosaic District was established by the same team behind the neighboring Red Apron Butcher and the Partisan. Many house cocktails are named after album B-sides, obviously, while other drinks are just efficient, like the Pina Margarita. Craft beer and wine are also available, as is a Creole-inspired menu from the next-door eatery. When it comes to character, nothing beats Baby Bar in Spokane. The house rules include no crying and no fake accents, while the drink menu lists beer and booze. Touring alternative bands often pop in to play, drink, or both. And if you're hungry, Baby Bar has a great neighbor, Nito Burrito. With a tagline like Hipster Free since 83, it's hard to ignore the lure of a place like Crockett's Lodge. The Morgantown Tavern has your typical bar decor, wrapped Christmas lights, framed portraits of regulars, posters, stickers, stained glass lamps, and a TV or two. The drink menu includes beer, wine, whiskey, and stiff cocktails. What's more, Crockett's and its customers claim it has the best wings in town, and they've been served the same way throughout its 37-year history. This Milwaukee bar is so famous you'll see I Closed Wolski's bumper stickers on cars across the country. Wolski's Tavern was established by Bernard Wolski in 1908, and it's the classic house-style tavern on Milwaukee's Lower East Side. The beer list features everything from Old Milwaukee and Coors Light to local brews like Lakefront East Side Dark on Draft. Open since 1907 under the same name, the Mint feels like the quintessential Wyoming bar. Inside this narrow stretch of a tavern in downtown Sheridan, beneath the iconic neon cowboy, you'll spot red cedar trimmings, a longwood bar, taxidermized adornments, historic newspaper clippings, and cedar shingles of 9,000 local cattle ranch brands. But when it comes to drinks, there's a lengthy menu of beers, whiskey, and wine. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about the best places to visit in your state are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.